The first derivative test is really long in words, but very short and concise if you look at it just in pictures, which is why I have these three blank graphs here on the right. So let's go through it in words first or at least concurrently with drawing the pictures. But then when you think of it in the future, just really think of it as the pictures and that's fine. Let's see what it says. It says, assume F is continuous on an interval that contains a critical point C and assume F is differentiable on an interval containing C, except perhaps at C itself. Okay, so that's all the conditions. That's the setup. Okay, and the first part says, if F prime changes sign from positive to negative as X increases through C, then F has a local maximum at C. So this just tells us that at some point C, if F goes from increasing to decreasing, then we have a local max at that point C, right? So when you draw it out, you kind of say, of course, right? It's very intuitive when you use a picture. Okay, for part two, we have if, this, that should, there should be an if there, if, if F prime changes sign from negative to positive, as X increases through C, then F has a local minimum at C. Okay, let's draw it out and make sure that's intuitive as well. So here we have our C again, and it says F prime goes from negative to positive. And of course, there's our local min. Okay, and the third part says if F prime is positive on both sides near C or negative on both sides near C, then F has no local extreme value at C. Okay, so that might look something like this. Okay, so our same point C here, and maybe we go up and then level off at C and then keep going up. Okay, so yeah, we have a derivative of zero here at this critical point, so we would have a critical point, but it's increasing and increasing, for instance, here, so it's, there's no local max or min. So that's the first derivative test. Just remembering the picture version or the intuitive version of it is fine. Let's try it in an example. Okay, in this example, we have use the first derivative test to locate the local maximums and minimums for f of x equals the square root of x times natural log x. Okay, first thing we have to do is find where the function is increasing and decreasing. To do that, we have our three steps. First, we compute the derivative, f prime of x equals, well, we're, we'll need the product rule here. Well, first off, let me, let me just first rewrite this. Let's do f of x just to make it a little easier to take the derivative. I'm going to write it as x to the one half natural log x. Okay, now we have our product rule. So f prime of x is then, so this is the product a times b. Remember that the product rule is a prime b plus b prime a in this case. So a prime b is one half x to the negative one half. There's a prime b natural log x plus b prime, derivative of natural log x is 1 over x times a x to the 1 half. There's the derivative part. The rest is algebra, and the algebra is usually the trickier part of finding the local maxes and mins. So let's do it. We're really looking at step two here. We're trying to find the critical points, and remember the critical points are where the derivative is not defined and where the derivative equals zero. So we have our derivative. Let's set that equal to zero and see what we can make happen here. Well, look what we have. We have x to the one half over x, which is x to the one half minus one, which is x to the minus one half. So all of this is actually x to the minus one half. So I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm gonna use denominators in this case instead of working with the negative exponents. Both would work, but let's use denominators in this case. So I'm gonna write this as natural log x over two, how about rad x, plus one over rad x. Now we can get a common denominator of two rad x, so I'll do two over two. This gives us natural log x plus two over two rad x, and of course we're still wanting this to be zero. So now we look at the bottom and the top, essentially. At the bottom, this tells us where f prime does not exist, d and e. And the top tells us where f prime equals zero. Well, it does not exist at x equals zero, because that gives us zero in the denominator. So there's one of our critical points. And now we set the numerator equal to zero, natural log x plus two equals zero to find the other critical point 
How about natural log x equals negative 2? Do you remember how to solve this from pre-calculus or algebra or somewhere like that? There's a few ways you can state it, but one way to think about it, at least once we get to calculus, I like thinking of it as taking both sides base e. That does the trick. The e and the natural log undo each other, and we get x equals e to the negative 2, or we can think of that as 1 over e squared. Okay, on to step three. We are now checking each region to see where the derivative is increasing and decreasing. Okay, on to step three. We are now checking each region, the region defined by these critical points, to determine if the derivative is positive or negative in those regions. That will correspond to where the function is increasing and decreasing. And then we can use that information in the first derivative test to spot our local maxes and mins. So let's set up our sign chart. Well, we only have two critical numbers. We have x equals 0 and x equals 1 over e squared. And in fact, anything to the left of x equals 0 is not even going to be in our domain. So I'm just going to ignore that whole region out there. We need test points in each of these regions here. Remember, e is about 2.71 something. So 1 over that is going to be, well, some, some decimal less than 1. So our point out here to the right can be x equals 1. Now we just need a point between 0 and 1 over e squared. You can pick anything in here, but I'm going to be clever and pick something that I can easily plug into my function because we want to test it after all. It's a test point. So how about 1 over e cubed? Do you agree that that would be between 0 and 1 over e squared? It would be. Okay, so now let's test our points. Test. We have our x values and our f of x, which we'll write as natural log x plus 2 over 2 rad x. And we just need to know if the derivative, that natural log x plus 2 over 2 rad x, is positive or negative in these regions. So let's add our test points in. We have 1 over e cubed and 1. Well, okay, so let's test 1 over e e cubed. Note that that's the same thing as e to the negative 3. Well, note that when we plug in e to the negative 3 to natural log x, let's just do an aside, a little side calculation there. Natural log e to the negative 3, this negative 3 comes down to the front, and we get negative 3 natural log e, which is just 1, which is negative 3. Okay, so we're just trying to determine if, thing is, if this thing is positive or negative. We have negative 3 plus 2, which is negative, divided by, well, we're just putting in a positive number to the square root, so that's positive. So negative divided by positive gives us a negative. So this whole region here from 0 to 1 over e squared is decreasing. Now we plug in 1. Natural log 1 is 0, so we just have positive up top. Need a little bit more room here, divided by 1 in the denominator, that's just 2, that's positive. Positive divided by positive is still positive. So then we are increasing from 1 over e squared off to infinity. But recall, what we're looking to do here is use the first derivative test. And so we can do that right off this sign chart, essentially. This negative tells us that the function is decreasing in this region, so I like, kind of like to just draw an arrow in here, and then e increasing in this next region, which tells us that, the first derivative test tells us that there must then be a local minimum at this point, 1 over e squared. And that's all we've set out to show in this example. So then we just write it out, local minimum at x equals 1 over e squared. And it doesn't even ask us to determine what that local minimum is. If it did, and we will need to do that, we would plug it in where? Not at the derivative. I'm going to go past the derivative and plug into the original function. right? To get the y value for a local min or max, you always have to plug into the original function. But luckily, we don't need that. So let's just leave it there. Local minimum at x equals 1 over e squared. That is our final answer using the first derivative test.